are good friends of mine, and I cannot tell you how lucky you are to have these two talented people in front of you. One of them is a city council person. I don't know if he told you that or not, but he has another life, and I have a hard time telling him apart sometimes which one's the city county person. But uh, they help us a lot. They're very talented, and they're very famous nationally. And uh, I just want to come over and be here for a minute and thank them for coming to, they come to so many of our programs to help uh, Sophia and her group. And they bring such talent and leadership and, and promise for the future. So I just want to uh, congratulate them both for being here today. You didn't come here to hear me, so let's get on with the show. Thank you. So we are in I'm the big little brother and I'm the little big brother, Mr. Al. And the reason why we say big, little, and little big is because here in America, I'm considered to be the big brother. But in other parts of the world, Asia and Africa, they actually say that it's the big brother who allows the little brother to come into the world first. And if you look at my brother, he's always been a little bit bigger than me, you know, a little cooler than him, dressed better than him. I'm just better than him. <laughs> When we were little, he used to pee in the bed a little bit more than me. The girls used to dump him more than me. I can go on forever. But uh, we, we're so glad to be here today to share our, our work and our words with you guys, especially in time for this work experience that you guys are about to undertake. My brother and I are both professional social workers. We, we, that means we work in the community. We can work anywhere from hospitals to schools, the, the VA, trauma centers. We do everything from working with nonprofits, working with families, working with community-based organizations. We're social workers. And our, our social work career started when we were actually, we were 12 years old and we attended the YMCA, at Walnut Street YMCA summer camp. And we were in the camp at 12 years old and the director at that time, a gentleman, my name is Mr. Booker, gave us our first jobs at 13 years old because we were such good campers. He gave us a job, our first job at 13 years old, working with the campers. And most of the, the guys who were working with camp, they had, camp counselors were different then. It was like they had college kids coming back or seniors in high school. But we, we were only eight going into ninth grade, eight going into ninth grade, getting ready to have our first jobs. And he respected us so much that my brother and I basically had our own group of kids. So we were treated just like the college kids. And we knew from that very first day that, I mean, they actually paid us to do what we love, to have fun with kids. We knew this was going to be our, our career, so we say that this experience you're about to undertake, truly take advantage of it because you never know what, where it will lead you. And it also says a lot about how your, that, that, that sense of pride in you about, you know, I'm, I'm working for something. No one's going to hand you anything in, in the real world. So when you get up and you work for something, it, it means something. And, and when you put your best into it, you'll get that same thing back. It's true, truly. And, and, and be appreciative that you were selected because there, there's hundreds of kids in Newcastle County there's hundreds of kids in, in Wilmington, you know, who, who, do, who were not selected, who will not have the opportunity to work with you. But you guys are lucky enough to be blessed, so please take advantage of the opportunity. And when you get there, put your best foot forward and, and, and show that beautiful work ethics and make, make your parents proud and your grandparents proud. So. And, and one last thing I would say, I guess that the other side of all of the good stuff about getting a job is today is, is Wednesday. Our summer jobs in Wilmington started on Monday, and yesterday I had to fire my first two youth. So this is a good opportunity for you. Don't blow it. I, I had one guy tell me he what, what he wasn't going to do. I'm like, that, that's not how summer youth works. You know, you don't get to decide what you're going to do. And all we were doing passing out flyers yesterday, and he didn't want to do it. So he lost his job over you know being resistant to whatever. I mean, all year round you think about having an opportunity to work during the summer. So you have this opportunity, you truly take advantage of it and, and, and don't waste it, don't waste it. Take full advantage of it. As was stated earlier, you never know what door this may open for you. So truly take advantage of it. We wanted to share a, a few of our poems to hopefully inspire you and, and lead you to that, that great door of having a good summer. Mm -hmm. And just knowing what, what it is someone, someone mentioned earlier, what you love, what you love to do and, and you'll never feel like you're working. We knew early on that we, we can do two things. Our family always encouraged us to write and we work with children. And now we're able to do those two things, you know, as a career. So it, it, it's beautiful, you know, to just work and do it, what you love to do. And it, it, it's a blessing. So we encourage you all to truly find that passion. And, and this summer, even if you're not doing the job that you truly want to do, give it give it your best and, and try and just figure out, well, how can I get a step closer to getting the job I want? There's a girl in my science class she makes my heart stop whenever she walks past. Believe me, she's the reason that lip gloss was made. Together we can be the Beyonce and Jay-Z of fifth grade. <laughs> but it's just one small problem. 
And time after time, my mind keeps reminding me of this. She doesn't even know you exist. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just trying to take it slow. Now, my mind is always giving me hints and suggestions of things that I should do in order to make her mind. You can buy her flowers and candy. Your girls love candy. Okay, 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 I say. Now, one day I'm in science class and I'm daydreaming about you know who. When out of the blue, she steps up and asks if she can borrow a pen. You would have thought she asked me out for a date because I couldn't move. I was frozen in place. My mind said, sure. Then nervously, I knocked my pencil box to the floor and I picked it up and I gave her my favorite pen. My, my SpongeBob, SpongeBob pen. <laughs> She said, ooh, ooh, I love Spongebob. My mind said, send me two, send me two. But I didn't. I just let her walk away. And at the end of the day, my mind said, go talk to her. At least we'll get your pen back, stupid. I said, see, that's my new strategy. As long as she has that pen, she'll always have a part of me. My mind said, you're an idiot. You got to change your methods. At this rate, she'll never get the message. And from that point on, besides eating and sleeping, me and my mind spent most of our time trying to figure out ways to, to make, make her mind. My mind said, look, it's, it's as easy as one, two, three. You know what? You're right. You're right. I'll just step up and ask her to go out with me. Now, every day, my mind says, today's the day. But day after day, I keep putting it off. And I have to keep reminding my mind, look here, buddy, I'm still the boss. My mind says that we call the perfect moment, the, the golden, golden opportunity. opportunity. And everything went smooth until the moment execution. I panicked. And my mind starts screaming, just do it, just do it. And will you please just shut up, stupid? She turns around and says, I know you ain't talking to me. <laughs> oh, no, I was talking to myself, I said. Oh, great, now she thinks well, cuckoo. cuckoo talks to the voices in his head. Thanks a lot, thanks for nothing, I said. My mind says, get ready, champ, here she comes again. I open my mouth, but, 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 but no words come out. My mind says, come on, you can do it, you can do it. But I have butterflies inside, and my legs have turned to fluid. My mind says, uh, you blew it. You know what, I'm tired of fighting this war. So now I'm in love with someone else, because I realized that my mind didn't want the girl for me. He wanted her for himself. Thank you. All right, you guys got a lot of advice thrown at you today, uh, whether it's some of the current county employees, uh, also the twin poets were here to not only uh, perform some of their poetry, but also give you some great advice as well. What, what were some of the tips you picked up today that you think will help you succeed in your summer jobs? Um, well, one thing I heard was uh, you never know who's watching, and so like it's always best to bring your best foot forward and, you know, make the best impression that you can uh, where you're working and then, you know, maybe you can, that'll open up so many opportunities for you. Um, I learned that there's hundreds of other juveniles in the state of, or in the Newcastle County that wanted the, these jobs and they didn't get it and we did so that we have this opportunity so we should run with it and not slack off. Um, I learned to always put your, put your foot, mm, put your foot forward. Mm. I learned that, uh, like like they said before, people wanted this job and we were, uh, you know, lucky enough to get the job. Like we, we um, qualified for it, and uh, I'm just thankful for the opportunity. Young adults and teens, our nation needs you to help our children in America begin to recover their dreams. dreams. Even if you haven't always done things right, it's never too late to change your life. Your future is calling, and America needs you to listen, to put yourself in a position to make good decisions, to earn scholarships to college and not to prison. Even when you begin to lose faith, America needs you to see the beauty in your own face. America needs you to believe in you. America needs you to believe in you. America needs you to say that your generation is not, is not lost. America needs you to prove them wrong at all costs. When it seems that you're all alone in need of support, America, America needs, needs you to you turn to a teacher, a counselor, a even a coach on the court. America needs you to hold on to your goals and plans because our future is in your hands. America needs you to take advantage of the opportunities you have to enjoy life, to, to live, to, to learn, learn, to love, to, love, to laugh, life. to respect your life to protect your life. America, America needs you. America needs your creativity and your imagination and your innovation so they can again be the greatest nation. America needs you to believe, believe in you. America needs you to realize that your goals are priceless and that your worth isn't determined by fancy clothes or high tech devices. America needs you to get away from the touch screens but never, never give up your dreams. Thank you. What did, what did you think about 
you know, criticism of, of, of youth in general that they're self-absorbed and more interested in, you know, looking at their phone and chatting with their friends than working. What about that part um, about, you know, making sure you do put your phone away and, and work hard and worry about what you got to do, not what somebody else is doing on their phone and, and that kind of thing. What did you guys think about that part of the, uh, the, the comments today? I mean, I would say that that's just one opinion and, you know, we all have a self of us that, like, where we can work hard and that's why we were chosen for this program. So, you know, if all of us do that and put our best foot forward and work hard, then, you know, we can definitely, you know, get more opportunities as we grow older through these jobs and networking and stuff. Um, I feel like it's not everybody's like that, but there are, we do have this views that are like that and it all depends on if you see that like the twin poet said if you see that one person and you're a part of that group it's going to influence you you should influence yourself not let other people influence you all right um, i'm gonna have to write the question but so, oh yeah um yeah if people do keep having their phones out i feel like if you always have your phone you're not going to wear nothing yeah, it, it, I mean, did you hear about the? Did you hear the story about the kid who didn't want to do his job and he got yeah. fired yeah. first day? Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah, like, I mean, you are getting paid for this. Like, this isn't yeah. you know free. Like, you just in your free time, you're getting paid actual money for it. Like, it's a good job. You're getting paid what ten ten for it. Mm -hmm. So it's just a better than minimum wage. So we should take it seriously. And this is going on your permanent record. Exactly. So if you see that you're, if they see on your permanent record in what six years, seven years, you go to apply for a real job after you get out of college. And they see that they're gonna say, "Oh, what makes me believe that you've changed? And you're not gonna do what you did then. And you're not gonna do it now." A lot of things. I mean, definitely in the workplace. I mean, I know you all see it when you when you're out shopping, you're going in the malls, you see the workers at the counter with their phones out, and you know, or they're turning their back and they're texting. If your supervisor says no phones, that means what? No phones. No phones. It does not mean no phones when he's standing near me. It means no phones. Because someone is always watching. Even if the supervisor is not there, someone else is, is, is noticing you. It may be a coworker, but she always has her phone out, you know. He, he's always on his phone. Though. So just pay attention. Whatever the rules are, follow the rules. That's what breaks are for. We need to text. We need to respond to a call. If it's an emergency, by all means, go let your supervisor know. But it does not mean have an all-day chat with my boyfriend, you know? That does not mean check on my girlfriend 47 times. No, it does not mean respond to my butt. No, it, it just doesn't. Work means work. So let's go to work, let's put our best foot forward, and let's have a star checked by her name at the end of the summer saying, this was an excellent worker, I want her back next year, I want him next year, you know? And that, that's how it happened for my brother and I. And like I said, we were sex workers. Every year, we worked for four years in a row, at the Wall Nursery YMCA, when our when that December we put in, Mr. Booker said, "No, these two are these two are coming back." So every year, so you all can do that. Just put your name, try to excel, separate yourself from your peers, try to be the best. Some of you working that you can be. I just want to just say um, I wish the kids well this summer. I um, hope they get a great experience, um, and hopefully they'll leave a impact on those employers that they work with this summer that um, maybe call them back for employment next summer or down the road from now. Um, so I work with my school, William Penn High School at the Penn Bistro and I work at Eisenberg. It's like I serve lunches and breakfasts to the kids in the community. Um, I'm working for the state parks through the Youth Conservation Corps. I'm working for the social buildings in Newark. I'm working for uh, parks in Newcastle. I work in the library in Bear Dollar. Asking children what they wanted to be when they grow up and they were doctors and lawyers and dentists and there was one young lady who was being very negative to her peers and every time they said something she said you're not going to be a lawyer, you can't do this, you can't do that. You can't do this. And I just said to her they can be whatever they want. Dreams are not illegal. So that's how we started. We took that phrase dreams are not illegal. In our writing processes we start with the title and build the poem around it. So this is dreams are not illegal. I heard that dreams are illegal. Girl, you're not gonna be a doctor. I heard that dreams are illegal. Well, you're not gonna be a lawyer. I heard that dreams are illegal, but, but I am dreaming. Don't you know that dreams are illegal? I heard that dreams are illegal, illegal, but I am dreaming. I had a dream, I had a dream I was in America. 
When I was asked in the land of the free and the, the home, home of the, the brave, brave, my boss came into my office and said, hi, hi Bob, Bob, how's it going? Why don't you take off early and here's that raise? And as I pulled my suburban up to my suburban home, I got the mail out the box, so I was approved for another home equity loan. Great. The girl starts there ringing the bell with cookies to sell. Of course, I brought a box of Hillary Quieter down Marmaduke up began to bark. And then later on, the wife and the kids took a bike ride to the park. Keep up there. When we got back, we had apple pie with ice cream on top. And then we hit it on down to the red box to get some DVDs to watch. We we'll returned the kids, put in their PJs and relaxing in the den for some family time watching, watching videos. Then all the strangers turned and said to me, what are you doing, doing here? Don't you know that dreams are illegal? What are you doing don't here? Don't you know that dreams are illegal? Those gunshots. Gunshots. Gunshots ring in the heat of the night, followed, followed by screams. screams. Violently disrupting my, my dreams. dreams. You see, in my neighborhood, I don't need to read the paper or watch, the, watch the news to notice something bad happened around here tonight. But once the ambulance leave and the police siren stop and the crowd disperses, that, that silence, silence, that silence, social to my soul, sobering my senses, and it's often over intoxicating society. And I, I try to relax. I try to relax, but the devil just won't let go. He keeps pointing to the signs that are posted all around me. Every dreams are illegal. You see, my neighborhood is the bottom of the borough where drugs get mixed. Here there are no brothers and sisters, just confused brothers and sisters. Here people drown in the backwash of the latest political, political scandal. scandal. Here the devil is in sweet control as dreams are stolen. You know there is no honor amongst thieves, so dreams are stolen with ease. A high school graduate, barely 17, gives up her college dreams for a pair of tight jeans and a chance to be the next inner city queen. In checks, the inner city, checks, checks and basketballs basketball. bounce with regularity. Life and death in a mix with no disparity. Some children live for nothing and some children die for nothing. Every day, blue skies are gray. All they know is that they want to make dough. The devil has them chasing a colorless rainbow. And at the end, there is no pot of gold, just a pot of steam, which, which he exchanges for their dreams. dreams. You see, bona fide slaves are made in the devil's dream trade. Without dreams, you are equivalent to being non-existent. You see, our children, our children need to be told they can achieve and that God bless those who hold on to their dreams. We got to take down the signs so the kids won't know that the devil is trying to make dreams. And I'm not drugs, but he's trying to make dreams legal. But dreams are not illegal. Thank you. of your mouth just curl and point to the sky who are you looking at like that with those old ugly eyes trying to tell me those old ugly lies trying to tell me how I how our hair is too short and our features are too rough I swear you need to get your eyes checked because here you go again with the that same, same old mess. mess about how she looks better and how you like her hair but don't you think she's thinking the same thing when she looks in the mirror I know blah 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 I heard it all before you don't like our eyes our nose our cheekbones and our lips for sure and don't even get me started on the pimples and black kids and how you wish mom would just get us some proactive like the other kids then my skin would be smooth and everybody would say how cute I am snap out of it snap out of it when the hating our gifts become a part of the plan and I think and you think that she thinks she's better she's just doing the same thing that she saw somebody else do the flyest thing in the world is just you being you because it's only one you so you can never be number two so let's make a pack and agree that if you look in the mirror from now on, you'll be amazed at all the beauty you see. When you look at me, I want you to see your face as a priceless jewel, a full sunflower, peach blossom and bloom. I want you to see all my marks of beauty and gaze at my features as you stroll your fingers down my cheeks. I want you to see my rainbows that are my eyebrows, right above the roses that are my eyes. And in the middle of my carnation lily cheeks is my lotus flower of a nose. 
And while my mouth is as beautiful as jasmine and ginger, and when I smile, notice I no longer have two lips, but rather two lips, orchids and daisies. I know to see me this way for the first time, it's crazy. But we in this together, girl, me and you. And if you forever see the beauty in me, I'll forever show the beauty in you. So when you look at me, I want you to smile and want to take a selfie. And when you greet me tomorrow morning and you say, hello, beautiful, I won't be surprised. I'll just know now she now see the beautiful flowers that she has grown on the inside. Thank you.